Hello everyone, welcome back to Eureka Tradings. In our last video, we looked at some brokers that were recommended for futures trading, and we decided to start off with TD Ameritrade's desktop platform called Thinkorswim, so we can paper trade futures contracts and start practicing. And while I log into my Thinkorswim account, I'm just going to drop a little disclaimer. This channel is not affiliated with TD Ameritrade or anything, and this is not some kind of advertisement. The reason we decided on TD Ameritrade was mostly because it seemed best suited for beginners like us, and I actually found a way to get real-time data for the futures markets in Thinkorswim. So now that we signed into our Thinkorswim paper money account, we can see up here that it says delayed data. As I mentioned in one of our previous videos, usually futures market data is delayed on most free resources and even here by around 10 to 15 minutes. But we can upgrade this to real-time data and what we need in order to do this is $500 to deposit into our TD Ameritrade account. This is just a deposit though, and if you need this money back, you can always just withdraw it at any time. If you don't have the $500 to allocate to your TD Ameritrade account, that's totally fine because you can still paper trade with the delayed data, and you can skip to this timestamp of the video to skip this deposit process. So the first step to getting real-time data is go to your account by logging into TD Ameritrade on the website, and from the main page, you can scroll down here and click the Add Funds button. They give you a handful of ways to make a deposit, but I just went with this one at the top. It's super fast and all you need to put in is your bank's routing number and your account number. After you confirm the $500 is deposited, the next step is to call TD Ameritrade's customer support number, which can be found on Google right here. When you start the call, they'll ask you for your account number to log in through the phone. And if it's your first time calling, you'll probably be asked to set up a four digit security pin number for your account first. Once you finish that, they'll take you to the main menu, and you want to pick the option they give you for general questions about your account. After that, they'll connect you to a representative, and really all you have to do is ask for real-time data on your Thinkorswim paper money account. And they change it for you right away. I think they literally just have to click a few things on their side, and once the changes are made, you can confirm up here that this changed to real-time data in green, and you can also click this to expand it, and as you can see, we have real-time data now for all these categories. Now we're ready to paper trade, but before we jump into that, let's take a quick look at the interface first. It can be a little overwhelming at first sight, especially for someone like me who's used to the simplicity of Robinhood, but the more we use this program, the easier it'll get, and it'll start to become like muscle memory. On the left side, we can see our balance, and the default settings give us $200,000 of paper money. Now this $200,000 is actually a combination of two different accounts which we can flip through right here by clicking on this button at the top. And you can see we have a margin account and an IRA account. These accounts each have $100,000 in them and you can take a closer look at these by going to this tab right here labeled monitor and it shows us our balance here. So right now I'm at my margin account and you can see the balances here and here. And when I switch to my IRA account, it changes the balances for me. Now when we trade, we want to use our margin account rather than the IRA. IRA stands for Individual Retirement Account, and these types of accounts aren't really ideal to use for trading. I think it's recommended that you don't pull out funds from these accounts until you retire. So I'm just going to select my margin account up here and keep it that way. And we can actually change our balance to whatever we want by clicking Adjust Account here. Right now, our margin account balance is at 100000 but I'm going to change this to something a little bit more realistic for a guy like me. So let's say $20,000. Cool, so now you can see our balance is adjusted to $20,000, and we can reset this back to the default $100,000 setting whenever we want to by going back to adjust account and clicking this box here. So cool, now you can see that it's back to $100,000. And once we start making trades, up here we can actually look at the working orders and the filled orders and the canceled orders. Um, so you can just kind of track your activity you know, as you trade. All right, now let's go back to the left side and under our balances, we can see live news. And this is just, you know, it's pretty simple. It's just news and stuff that's going on in the financial world. And right under that, it says Trader TV. This is pretty cool. You know, you can flip through a few channels. Uh, it says TD Ameritrade Network, CNBC US, CNBC Europe, CNBC Asia, and Futures Now. It's like a mini TV window uh, with these channels. Uh, let's just look at CNBC US and we get live coverage. And right under that, there's the watch list section. You know, this is mostly for convenience when you start trading, uh, you know, certain stocks or futures contracts. If there's ones that you look at very often, then you can just add them in this watch list and kind of click through them 
uh, quickly. All right, now I'm just gonna collapse this part. You can do this by clicking this little thing right here. So it kind of gives you more room in the window and also you can uncollapse it and open it back up by just clicking on this and it'll bring it back up to you. All right, so now let's look at some charts and we can do that by clicking on this tab up here that says charts and we can search whatever ticker we want. Um, let's just start off with, I don't know, the SP500, SPX, here we go. And I don't know, maybe we can try Google and we can try Facebook. And here's Apple. Cool. These are just normal stocks though. So let's try out futures. And in order to find futures charts, all you really have to do is add a slash in front of the symbol. So remember the S&P 500 E-mini futures contracts, you know, the code is ES and you want to find the month. So right now the current contract is the one that expires in September. So that would be ESU 21. So we'll just type in slash ESU 21. And there we go. We have the current contract of the S&P 500 E-mini futures. And here's a cool thing that I just found out. Um, you can actually just type in slash ES and it'll give us, you know, like the continuous contract. I think it just combines all the contracts after they expire, um, puts them all together in one nice chart. And you can do the same thing with, you know, gold futures. Let's just try see slash GC and it'll give us the continuous gold contract. And I don't know, here's crude oil slash CL. So we actually don't have to, you know, look for the month code every time. We can just type in slash and, you know, the contract name and it'll automatically give us, you know, a nice continuous chart. And finally, for the last bit of this video, let's just look at the different time frames. So we can do that by clicking on this button up here uh, that says D. This is the time frame setup and you can see that we're currently on the one year, one day time frame and it gives us some default you know favorites one day one minute five day five minute five day 15 minute etc and these are just different time frames so right now we're on the one day one year this basically means that you know horizontally we are looking at one year and each uh, little candlestick bar represents one day now let's change that to the one day, one minute. And now we are looking at horizontally one day's worth of change. And each candlestick represents one minute. If we change this to the five day, five minute, then, you know, we are looking at horizontally five days worth of change. And each candle bar represents five minutes. And we can actually change this to whatever we want. We can click on this up here. And then if we click time frame, we can change this to you know our liking we can look at the 10 days five minute or i don't know five days you know one minute etc so you know these are all personal preference we can just play around with this and figure out which ones we like and you know there probably will be some that we don't use at all and there will probably be some that we use all the time so we just have to find you know what works for us all right guys i think that's a good place to end this video what I'm going to do is, you know, keep looking at these charts, playing with these different time frames first. We'll take our time, slowly start getting into actual paper trading. But I think what's important is to kind of understand and just kind of get familiar with looking at the different time frames and the chart. I think uh, what might be a good idea is to just, you know, for the next week, every morning, I'm going to wake up at like 9 a.m. and just watch the charts and kind of monitor how the market moves and just digest this information because it's a lot of information. And in order to, you know, effectively be able to trade, we really have to understand how the market works first. So I think the first step for us is to just, you know, watch and learn. <laughs> Thanks again for watching this one, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.